Hey guys, it's Wahima, but just call me Wa. Melanated! Welcome to my inaugural recap of a 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After, Season 5, Episode 1. Don't know the name of it, but who cares? Alright you guys, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and go on ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you guys want to get notifications of my review, I will be reviewing this season's 5 of Happily Ever After, aka HEA, and 90 Day Fiance The Other Way, Season 2. Oh, such a breath of fresh air. I'm so sick of the couples from before the 90 days. Here we go on to the couples that we already know, the magic that we have already been given, and let's jump right in. So this episode is basically about Larissa and Colt. I mean, they really wanted to give us a lot of Larissa and Colt. We got no of Paul and Karini. And what is a 90 day fiance without boo boo to fool Paul? I mean, this man has managed to make money being a character on TV. And he can't make money in any other fashion besides like raking up poo off of farms. Okay. Anyway, so let's jump right into Larissa and Colt. So we first start off with some song about the King of Vegas while Colt is like lifting weight. And then all of a sudden they abruptly stop the music when Debbie comes in from the kitchen and she's like, hi, Colt. And he's like, hi, mom. And then we just realize that this is another episode of Smothered. Debbie pretends to lift up a weight and she's trying real hard to do it and they have a weird banter where he calls her cute or something. I don't know, maybe I just made that up, but that's what it seemed like he would say. Debbie's haircut is, you know, Debbied. I wish it could be better. I feel like they have money now. They've been on TV. Come on, let's get some things fixed like her hair. So they give us a little montage about their past, about his past with Larissa. Basically makes her look like a crazy person who's been in jail three times due to domestic violence. Colt has a secret. He has started to date again. He tells his mother that he thinks he's ready and she's like, oh no, 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 no. And so he knows he can't tell her. His phone starts to ring and he grabs his phone and like sneaks off into the house. And she's like, where are you going? And he's like, I, I have to go shower. And she's like, okay, that's so weird. Cole tells her that he's going to go visit some friends in Chicago for the weekend. And she's like, do I know them? And he's like, no. I mean, the truth is, is that he don't have any friends. So obviously this is some kind of weird situation that she's just trying to figure out, but he doesn't want to tell her. Turns out that he's been dating this girl named Jess. She's a redhead. She lives in Chicago. She's an au pair. She's here in the U.S. on a J-1 visa, which is a work or a job visa. She's been here for a year already and she has another six months. I didn't know they gave visas for 18 months, but I guess, you know, that makes sense. Is that 18 months? And he says that he likes her because she's redhead, she's got glasses, and she loves cats, and she also happens to be Brazilian, and he's into that. He hops on a plane, goes to Chicago to meet her. They have a weird, awkward conversation. She likes to smile and giggle the same way Larissa did, but she's a little bit more like va va voom with him. She always tells him good bull and all kinds of stuff. So I'm like, what is this little relationship they've got going on here? And while they're in the car, they're like making out with each other. It's real like, okay, you two, okay, okay, you two, we get it. You like each other. All right, so moving on to Larissa. Now Larissa's in Las Vegas as well. She's finishing up her community service at an LGBTQ plus community center. And girl, she cannot stand the poopy, okay? She is just so disgusted. She's in there spraying and she's just like, I am not here for this. And I'm like, what did you do at your house? Like, I just can't imagine Larissa growing up in a situation where she never cleaned her house. Like, I get it, you're cleaning like a public sort of space, but girl, just get on in there. So she then goes to have a pool party with some friends and the one friend I feel like is the friend that we saw from before and there's like a situation going on but I can't quite tell. Larissa also has a situation too. Girl in her confessionals Larissa has done too much. She went too far. In the actual episode she looks fine but in the confessional mm -mm. Mm -mm. it's too much right here. It's too much. It's too she's now getting into like Darcy territory where it looks just puffy. You know, there's no like definition. Larissa is looking great when she's with her friends though at the pool party and she talks about how she had to break up with Eric because he didn't want to have sex with her and he never told her that she was beautiful. And part of me is like, isn't Eric gay? Maybe she just wanted somebody to latch on to because she wanted to show that, you know, 
even though she was with Colt less than a year, that people do like her. I don't know, girl. Larissa also reveals that Colty has cancel her affidavit for green card. And girl, her friends have no idea what she's talking about, okay? So her friends are like, wait, what? And we think it's because he, they literally don't know what words just came out of her mouth and they've edited it to make it seem like they're in shock that Colt canceled her affidavit for the green card. <laughs> and I was just like, no, we all just didn't understand what the hell Larissa had just said. Colty, he consum my affidavit is. No, girl, we didn't understand. Neither did Heather and her other friend. I've never not understood Larissa so much since the very first episode I saw her than, than in this episode. It was like, she was just using words. She's, I mean, the girl doesn't know the word for straw. So now I can tell that Larissa has taught herself English by like reading because sometimes she just says these words real crazy and so you're like, oh, she sees the word in her head and she just doesn't know how to pronounce it. What is independent? Independent? What is independent? Oh, independent. Yeah, so it's just like, it's a lot with Larissa in this episode. God bless her. So she talks about how she got her nose done, her cheeks done, her chin done, her butts done. Like, and now she's, oh, girl, this season she's gonna go in and get her boobies done. And part of me is just like, is this really what you came here to do, girl? Because you know you can get it cheaper in Brazil. The lips, I understand. So we cut back to Colt and Jess, and they're in the car in the Uber on the way back to the hotel room to have sex. And Jess is already getting a little annoyed with Colt because she doesn't understand why Colt didn't tell Debbie about her. And Colt's like, I gotta be really careful, but she's taking that personally. And I don't think he's explaining it well. She, he just needs to say, you know, I'm really close with my mom and I just didn't wanna tell her right now that I'm seeing you, but not that you're my friend, that you're my girlfriend. And she's just like, okay. Meanwhile, he like grabs a bit of that thigh meat, you know what I'm saying? Cause thick thigh, Thighs save lives. I'm twerking right now. Thick thighs save lives. I'm twerking. Thick thighs save lives. Deek deek deek. Deek 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 deek. They like to show off Jess's body, and I imagine Jess will like to show off her body. She had little thickums, little short thickums. I mean, Cole even says to her that at some point in his life he had 15 cats. And if you guys watch some of the quarantine about him dressing up those damn cats, like. <sighs> Remember when I said that I thought that Colt could get it and that his skin probably feels like dolphin skin? <laughs> that was funny. Good boy. Good boy. Cut back to the Larissa. Larissa's in a public space on the phone, girl, telling her dad all the drama that's happening between her and Colt, mentioning that her mom is a sweet, nice person and doesn't want to be on camera because she's very discreet, so we're never going to see her, and asks her dad for $5,000 so that she could float her lifestyle because Colt cut her off. Now, I don't believe this. Larissa makes money from Cameo. She makes money from Instagram. I don't think Larissa needs the $5,000 from her dad. I think that was a ploy. And I think if he did give her $5,000, it was the $5,000 or the 10K that she's already sent back home for her daughter, Luana. So that's the end of those two. Let's move on to Asuelu and Kalani. So from Instagram, because I follow Asuelo, you would think that he's a really involved father, but apparently he's not. He works part-time at like a yogurt shop. I don't know, girl, passing out desserts and stuff, and he doesn't even know the word for desserts. Kalani picks him up from work. She's got both of the kids with her, then drives them back to the house in which her both of her parents have moved in to like help them out. Which I think this is their house anyway. So they probably decided why should we pay two mortgages when we're in just a way so let's just move in with Kalani and Asuelu so that we could pay one mortgage and it wouldn't be like you know we're just paying for them to live without us living too so it seems like a financial situation that might be working I don't know this is all to be true I'm just guessing but I know that at some point they were living in their parents house it wasn't their house and Asuelu's not too keen on it but also what Asuelu's not too keen on is helping his damn wife get them kids out of the car he sure did walk up in the house after working his little four hours at his part-time job and leave her to get both Kennedy and whatever the other one's name is out of the car into the house. And then when she gets home, her mother is the one who comes and helps her with Kennedy, who is cute as a button child. I mean, Kennedy is 
so cute. And so she sits down to have a conversation with him and he does not understanding that he's not providing enough for the family as far as help. He apparently plays volleyball. So whenever he gets off of work, he goes and plays volleyball for two hours and then comes back. And I'm like, Asuelu, what are you doing at work that requires you to go play volleyball in order to decompress? You don't get to decompress, sir. You have two kids under the age of two. You do not go and get to decompress to make friends. Oh, no. You know when you're going to make friends? When those kids are in t-ball or like whatever. That's when you're going to make friends, okay? Otherwise, your friends are her brother and her dad. You need to be there helping her with those kids. Like, absolutely not. The audacity. Or sometimes he goes downstairs and plays video games. Uh-uh. Some Aswala would come home and there'd be no video games. Which a little part-time job? No, sir. Absolutely not. I was just like astounded. So she's trying to have this conversation with him and he's just looking at her like, you know how Asuelu looks. Like he has not a thought happening from here to here. Then he's outside and they have an apple tree. Dad is outside raking up the apples that have fallen to the ground. And he tries to have like a man-on-man -man conversation with Asuelu. And personally, they did it in English. And I wish they just had, had it in the language. I don't know if it's called Samoan. I'm not sure. I don't think it is. I wish they had just had the conversation in the language so that he could really understand what was going on. Because Lola's like, this boy is a teenager. And he is not acting like a grown man with a whole family. He don't talk about it. He doesn't like them being there because then he isn't the man of the house. And I was like, uh, you ain't the man of the house with them here or without them here, apparently. So the next couple that we're going to talk about is Angela and Michael. Oh, I mean, how sweet was it to hear Angela's voice? After hearing Lisa for the last six months, we just finally get to see Angela. And Angela's just as crazy as ever, girl. I mean, we start off with her and Skylar doing stripper classes and them drinking a nice cold Coca-Cola or Pepsi afterwards. And I was like, what's the point of doing this workout if you're going to drink a bunch of sugar afterwards? Huh? Angela's like, you got me on this. Like, I could do the body rolls, but you got me on the booty pop, Skyla. And Skyla's like, I got the booty pop. And I'm just like, whew, girl, they got them a new house, okay, for all the people, all the grandkids to fit in. Saying word on the street is, I was told, him, I was told by my good Judy, Chris Farah, that Scotty's out. Uh, they don't talk about her, but they do talk about the mom who we know since has passed so angela's mother is uh has passed since this is aired and angela and michael are having trust issues as per usual angela tells skyla after they finish their stripping lesson that she really needs for skyla to go with her to nigeria so that they can get married and do the spousal visa skyla's like look before I consider doing any of this, which I'm not going to do, I need you to go to a lawyer and figure out your rights. Like, how are you going to be able to get out of this relationship if it doesn't work? I need you to do more research legally about what this means. And Angela's like, mm, maybe I will, maybe I won't, but you need to come with me to Nigeria. And Skylar's like, no, mom, I'm not going with you. I want him to come here so we can see how he gets along with the family. And I'm just thinking like, damn, Angela and Michael have been together for three years now. And Angela has gone over to Nigeria three times now. Like, why doesn't Skylar trust Michael? Like, why does she still thinking that there's something nefarious going on? They're getting everything ready in this new house. It's still kind of sparse. There's like cleaning supplies everywhere, but it looks new. Sometimes I'm like, why can't I move to the South? And then I remember why. But like, she feels like the cost of living is so much cheaper, you know? They have a big backyard, there's a lake. So she's giving Michael the tour and then uh, she knows Michael has two cell phones and Michael's phone rings and it's of a different ringtone than what she's used to and she flies off the handle because she's like, Michael done save somebody's number with a ringtone. I need to be the only person that got a ringtone. This son of a bitch, he thinks he's who he's playing with. Ain't that about a bitch? I ain't that bitch. You know, you know, you know, Angela. So she goes in on him and Michael's just like, Angie, Angie, baby, what? I don't, why is this cause of stress? See, what, what is this between us? I am Sawi, Angie, baby. She gets so pissed at him and that she's like, look, they're the lake, they're the yard. Don't want to talk to you, Michael. She can't trust Michael, but there is nothing but love between them. And she loves him and they're going to make it work. Even though they fight all the time, they make up all the time too. And everything is going to be fine. All right, so the next couple that we're going to talk about is Andre and Elizabeth and Eleanor. Ah, oh, so cute. So Andre is a homestay dad. Elizabeth goes to work for her father. They have this new house they're moving into, so he's doing some stuff around the house. And you know, Andre don't want to do no work that he don't want to do. Okay, remember he was going to be a handyman, then he's going to be a truck driver, didn't do any of those. So he's a handyman and a home dad. And he's with Eleanor all day, which I love. I love 
that. So it's Chuck's birthday and they go off to the party and they're late, which the entire family is just so used to talking about them by now. And even the mom has piped up a little bit more. I didn't even know who her mom was because I was like, who's this dark haired lady? I've never seen this woman before in my life. And this is because she never really talked that much before. So now all of her sisters have babies because you remember her older sister, the one who hadn't had a baby, she has a baby now and she's married to some man from Denmark and then her sister-in-law had a baby. So they're all pregnant together. So they all have like babies under one. There's three of them. And so it was just like a lot of babies around. It's Chuck's birthday and they're celebrating the patriarch of the family. And Andre gets there and uses this opportunity to tell them about the wedding that they are planning on having in a month in Moldova and they're all invited. And the family, of course, erupts. And Libby is like, "What? you didn't talk to me. Why would you make this about you? Like, this is completely selfish. And I agree. Like, Andre has no sense of timing. He just wants to agitate this family so much like he is just not interested in making peace at all and the best part of it is the xenophobia like oh uh, you would think that he was asking them to go to like chernobyl the way they're talking about moldova like we gotta get shots pre-berlin wall like war-torn country and it is so ignorant and xenophobic. They're like, we don't know anything about this country. And he's like, you can Google it and figure out about Moldova. So now Libby has to try to like talk about how Moldova is like beautiful and great. And they're just like, nobody goes to Moldova. And I'm just like, you guys don't know that. It is ridiculous, but hilarious. They leave the party. Libby says like how pissed off she is at him. And he's like, what? Also, tell your father he's going to pay for it because I paid for the first wedding. Your sister's got dream weddings. You didn't get your dream wedding. So now he's going to have to pay for your wedding in Moldova. This is tradition. I don't care. She's like, you and and so you didn't. Why would you spring it on them if this is how it's going to be? There's a certain way you got to finagle and ask my dad for money. I understand her 100%. Like, he just messed up this whole thing by being a bull in a china shop or whatever the saying is. This feels like it's going to be a really good season of drama, and I'm here for all of it, especially because her brother acts up in Moldova around his homies and he wasn't about to have it. Ooh, big bodies. All I want to see is those big bodies fight. It's like two grams. <laughs> So that's the end of this episode. Let's have a kiki and a conversation down below. If you guys have any theories of what's going to happen later on in the season, please let me know. No spoilers, just theories, please. Okay, it's only episode one. I don't need the spoilers right now. Let's have a kiki and a conversation down below. Don't forget to check out these videos here and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> Remember to be you, be true, and find your place. All right.